In today's video, we are diving into the world of Power BI REST API. I know, I know, I'm not usually the one giving technical demos, but I've got some really compelling reasons why you, as a non-technical user, should get familiar with this incredibly powerful tool. So buckle up, because there might be a bit more technical terms than the usual. But fear not, I'll be focusing on the perks of using REST API for non-IT people. That doesn't mean our friends from the IT department won't find some golden nuggets in these videos. And if you're hungry for more technical documentation, you'll be able to dig into the nitty gritty details and ins and outs on your own with the links I share in the description below. Alright, let's start with the intro. Hello and welcome to Bilingual Analytics. My name is Roland and I'm here to guide you through the world of Power BI. If this is your first time around here, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. By doing so, you won't miss any of my Power BI videos. It means a lot to me and helps others to find content like this. First of all, let's break down these two abbreviations, REST and API. REST is like the language we need to use while an API serves as the tool that enables two pieces of software to communicate. Put simply, Power BI REST API acts as a channel between Power BI service and us to allow it to communicate. However, in this video, I'll be doing most of the talking. If you're curious for a deeper dive into the technicalities, I've included some links in the description below for both terms. But what exactly do we mean by talking? Think of it as a form of reporting. We can send a request or a question to Power BI, and in return, we receive some form of response. I understand it might still sound a bit abstract, so let me give you two examples. With the REST API tool, I can list all the datasets in the workspace. Additionally, using REST API, I can trigger a dataset or a data flow refresh. Now, here's where it gets interesting. I initially dived into and started using REST API because I needed a way to report on the status of dataset refreshes within the workspace. But I didn't stop there. I also wanted to know which dataset to the longest to refresh and the average refresh time. But no worries, we'll dive deeper into that topic in a dedicated tutorial coming soon. Stay tuned. So, like many of you, I took the first step and began browsing documentation, blogs and vlogs to get a better understanding of this. Remember, this is a new tool for me too, so diving into some learning never hurts, right? Before I knew it, I was using it for some smart processes that I used to have to tackle manually. But hey, I'm getting ahead of myself again. Today, my plan is to provide you with an introduction and help you take the first steps. This way, while you're waiting for more tutorials and real-world use cases from me, you can at least start getting excited about what's to come. So, without further ado, Let's head over to Microsoft Learn. Here on this overview page, you will find heaps of useful information. But if you are anything like me, you're probably itching to dive right into the hands-on part, give it a try, and then delve into the documentation. If you are on the same page, go ahead and hit the like button, so I know I'm not the only one. The great news is that Microsoft allows you to test out some of the features without the need for a full application registration. More on that later. Today, I'll be focusing on two examples that kickstarted my journey with REST API. Firstly, let's talk about how to list all the reports in a workspace. Now, you might be wondering why is this particular task so important? After all, shouldn't one already be fully aware of all the reports in a workspace? Well, let me throw a challenge your way. In a team where there are multiple report developers, it's not only possible, but highly likely that different developers will be publishing reports, and therefore datasets, to a single workspace. And this is just a simple example. There are a multitude of scenarios where having a complete list of datasets within a workspace could prove to be incredibly beneficial. Let's filter down the documentation to the get dataset in group. Now, in this conversation, we are essentially asking Power BI to do the heavy lifting for us by listing all datasets in a workspace. And here's where it gets really exciting. You won't need to write a single line of code or craft any complex requests. Just click on that eye-catching green Try It button, sign in with your account, and all you need to provide is the group ID or the workspace ID. Switch over to Power BI and in the URL you will find this ID right after the Groups section. Then hit that Run button. And voila! 
I mean at first it all looks ugly. It is just a blob of text, but let me highlight certain lines in this JSON formatted text. Along all the lines we can spot the dataset name and its corresponding ID. Now if we head back to Power BI and click on the Roadshow Report dataset, you'll notice the dataset ID in the URL matches exactly with the ID our text highlights. The dataset name and ID are both crucial for a specific reason. When it comes to carrying out further tasks, relying on the dataset ID is more dependable than using the name. There might be a typo in our request or someone could decide to rename the dataset. This is especially true when, for instance, we aim to trigger a dataset refresh through the REST API, which is another example I've prepared for today. Let's head back to Microsoft Learn and dive into how it's done. Head over to the documentation and search for datasets, refresh dataset in group. You'll notice that familiar green button. Go ahead and give it a go. Bring in the dataset ID and the workspace or group ID, then hit that run button. Do you see that response code 202? It means your request has been accepted. For a deeper dive into status codes, check out the link I've dropped in the description box. Now, let's go back to our dataset and confirm if it's been refreshed. Open up the refresh history pop-up, and there you have it. The dataset has indeed been refreshed using the API. How cool is that? Alrighty, let's wrap it up for today. It was a quick intro to REST API and two nifty examples that brought us here. But why should you care about all this? Well, here's the deal. Within the Power BI service, some functionalities are only accessible through the user interface, meaning you've got to do it by clicks. And guess what? Exporting that information? Not always straightforward. In fact, there are certain details that you can't even export, though they are right there. Take user permissions, for instance. So, if you're part of the analytics or BI team and you're looking to take your Power BI game to the next level, or maybe even automate some tasks, REST API is going to be your trusty partner. Saying that, I also have to highlight that some of the most crucial and frequently used requests are already integrated to Power Automate. Think refreshing data flows, data sets, and more. However, if you're a senior developer or part of the center of excellence team in your organization, there might be challenges that require the smarts of REST API. I'm talking about those situations where it could take you an eternity without it. So here I am sharing my excitement with you, even if I might be a bit late to the party. But you know what they say, better late than never right? Stay tuned because there are more tutorials coming your way. I've got a few ideas lined up diving into the real world business scenarios. I hope this video ignited some sparks of imagination and you will be brave enough to dive into the documentation and give REST API a try. Remember, it's a powerful tool waiting for you. If you have any questions or comments or specific requests along this journey, don't hesitate to drop them in the comments below. I'm all ears and dedicated to address your questions in the upcoming videos. Let's do this together. Since you've stayed till the end, I'm confident that you found value in this video. If that's the case, please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Don't forget to explore more of my tutorials like these ones above me. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.